Have you ever wondered how a microphone or loudspeaker works? In simple terms, in the case of a microphone, it receives the sound and converts it into an electrical signal, while in the case of loudspeakers a similar electrical signal generates vibrations in a piece that finally produces the sound. But there is much more than that. In fact I think it is relevant to understand what sound is before seeing how these devices work. In general terms, sound is the phenomenon of propagation of mechanical waves in an elastic medium whether a solid, a liquid or a gas, and it is precisely because of this that even when we are under water we are able to hear, or also the reason why, when an object is in a vacuum, it does not generate sound, because, since there is no means of transport for vibrations, the sound simply does not propagate. Understanding this, those same mechanical waves that propagate in a three-dimensional space, can be represented as a two-dimensional wave if we measure a specific point in space. These two-dimensional waves have certain defining characteristics. The first is their amplitude, that is, the difference between the peak of the wave and the center of it. That, in physical terms, it would be the difference in pressure that is generated in the air when the waves propagate, or, in terms of what we hear, it would be the volume. The second characteristic is frequency, which is how many waves occur in a given amount of time. For the following example, if five waves occur in a second, then that signal has a frequency of 5 Hz, a unit of measure that was named after Heinrich Hertz, who also investigated the propagation of electromagnetic waves. And the third characteristic is the period of oscillation, which is basically the inverse value to the frequency. In this case, if the frequency was 5 Hz, then the period of an oscillation is a fifth of a second. These second and third characteristics are what make a sound deeper when it has a low frequency and higher. higher. You get it. When it has a high frequency. And there are also other relevant features in the study of mechanical waves, such as wavelength and propagation speed. But to get that information we must have at least two receivers, such as our ears. The fact that we have two ears allows us to detect the direction from which a sound comes, because when a wave comes, it passes first through one ear, then a time lag occurs, then it passes through the other ear. In this way we can detect that the sound came from there. So far we know that sound waves have special characteristics and that in the air they propagate as a pressure difference. Now, this same pressure difference generates movement in the objects with which it impacts, such as our eardrums. So if we want to convert sounds in the air into a signal that we can transmit through a cable, we'll have to find a way to convert linear motion into electricity. Hmm. It sounds to me like we've seen that before. In the previous episode on how electricity is generated, Michael Faraday discovered that moving a magnet inside a coil of conductive material generates a voltage difference which also changes its polarity depending on the direction in which the magnet is moving. If we graph that same voltage variation over time, we will find that it acts in a similar way to the sound waves we saw before. But we still need to replicate the waves that are generated, which by the way are extremely fast, since our ears are able to perceive frequencies in a range between 20 and 20,000 Hz. Yes, up to 20,000 oscillations per second. To replicate them we need a system that amplifies the vibrations generated by the sound with great fidelity and also prevents the arrival of unwanted vibrations, such as that of the wind or those generated by our breathing. If we open a microphone, we're going to find the following. On the outside there is a cover that stops part of the wind that reaches the inside, plus a handle and a switch to be able to turn the microphone on and off. But let's get rid of that to go to what interests us here. Inside the microphone there is a capsule, which is composed of three parts essentially. Firstly a magnet, secondly a coil, and finally, a diaphragm that is stuck to the coil, which amplifies the vibrations generated by the sound. In this way, when a sound is propagated through the air, the pressure changes make the diaphragm vibrate, which in turn moves from the coil with respect to the magnet that, when interacting, according to Faraday's law, generates an electrical signal that has exactly the same frequency as the vibration that generates it. Having that clear, if we go to the other end and pass this electrical signal through an amplifier we will find that the loudspeaker uses that signal to feed a coil that is attached to a diaphragm and surrounded by a magnet. Yes, you heard me right, magnet, coil and diaphragm. Exactly with the same elements we can convert an electrical signal into movement. And surely now you must be wondering, 
If they are so similar, then, could I use a loudspeaker or a headset in this case as a microphone and vice versa? And the answer is yes. In fact, we are going to check it right now by connecting these headphones to the camera that's recording me. Uno, dos, probando, probando. En este momento me están escuchando a través de estos audífonos. De hecho, lo vamos a comprobar golpeándolos. Deberían escuchar un sonido raro. Y si yo golpeo la cámara, o el micrófono incluso, no va a sonar nada. If you want to see how some other invention works do not hesitate to leave it in the comments and remember that you can see my content on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. That's all for now and see you in the next video.